Hey, here it is. I'm cleaning everything, preparing for the barbecue today. My son's sitting over at the table. He's sketching some stuff and he is drawing and he wanted to be on YouTube, but I told him I'll let him show his drawings off. So not yet, but one day, if the Lord's will. So here he is at the table. He's doing a quick sketch. And then he's actually uh, finishing up his his picture and he's um, putting color to it. For him to be a 13 year old, he's been doing this for a few years now. He's pretty skillful at what he does. I mean, um, I draw myself and I've been drawing and showing him pictures and stuff since he was little. And his little brother is also starting to pick it up. So we got a couple artists in the family. This is his finished work. He has a lot of, actually a lot of pictures, but this was a quick sketch that he did in color. Now I'm back to flavor time. So here it is. I'm preparing this meat. Um, I'm always about washing stuff off. This was meat that I got that was previously uh, prepared and I had got out the freezer. So um, I'm taking it out of the bag and stuff but I, I always believe in washing my meat and stuff off to make sure everything's clean it was clean but when I uh, put it in there I had washed it and everything but I mean I did see from my thorn and stuff it still had a little blood inside of the meat so I'm just cleaning everything off making sure everything is good and making sure my hands and stuff are good and you know I like to be clean and keep everything sanitary especially when it comes to raw meats so um You'll see me washing my hand continuously, washing both of my hands continuously. There I am with some soap just to try to make sure things are done. I didn't keep everything uh, fully in this video because it would have taken so long. So I cut out a lot of times that I was washing my hand and stuff. But uh, I would advise that to anybody. Please make sure when you're dealing with raw meat, make sure you continuously wash your hands um, because you don't want to get that like all in your face or just you know, transfer that from place to place, dealing with your kitchen area. You wanna make sure everything is good. And here are these ribs that I'm pulling out right now. The other ribs are baby back ribs, the short uh, ribs you see me have. These are St. Louis cut style ribs. To me, uh, I guess they're supposed to be different, but to me, ribs are ribs. So uh, we're gonna roll with it. I'm gonna season them up and uh, <laughs> prepare them for the grill. But right now I'm not gonna keep them in a whole rack I'm going to uh, cut them down some, so I want equal equal racks of ribs, and uh, I'm gonna cut them down to make sure everything's good, and then season them up. So here I am with my knife, my little trusty knife. My knife's pretty good, it's pretty sharp. Uh, just make sure everything's good, cutting it down, and uh, make sure they're equal to the other side, uh, sides of the ribs, excuse me. There it is. I'm showing you both of these ribs and the size. And here I am with the season salt. Um, I don't I don't think this is not Laurie's right here. This is just like uh, regular all purpose season salt. I forgot the actual name of it, but I'm seasoning the food. I use season of salt and that's uh, garlic powder right there. Those are my two go to. They seem to season meat and stuff pretty good. And I'm seasoning on both sides. I do not like to eat food that is not well seasoned. So it may look like a lot to you, but when you're dealing with raw meat, you got to actually make sure you season this food well and make sure that it get inside of the actual meat. And um, I just don't put my meat right off um, after seasoning and putting it right off and like on the grill. What I do is I let it sit and you'll see in a few minutes or whatever, I let it sit in a container and I let it sit out for a little, a little while at room temperature. So it opens up and it actually uh, is infused with the, the seasonings. And then I'll put it in the refrigerator to keep it cool. Here I am sprinkling some uh, some actual rub on the meat also. So that's like maple rub. So here it is, the finished product. You can see um, I like for my meat to be well seasoned. And that's the container I was just telling you guys about. And I'm about to transfer that meat. But um. I, it's going to look like I'm transferring it pretty quick, but what I did was put it in that container, sealed everything up, and I left it out, I think, about 15 to 20 minutes at room temperature to make sure everything was uh, pretty much good to go dealing with the seasoning. Like I told you, I like for my food to be seasoned. So uh, here I am with that uh, dishwashing liquid, that antibacterial uh, palm olive, making sure 
that everything is cleaned up. And I also like I also uh, like to make sure I clean behind myself every time with soap and water and make sure everything's rinsed out when I'm actually doing that cleaning in the kitchen. Here I am transferring the meat uh, from the counter out there had sit out about 15 to 20 minutes to the refrigerator. And now on to my vegetables. I'm pulling the potatoes out. I'm getting ready to wash these things off because we are actually having baked potatoes tonight. So I always wash them off, make sure everything's good to go. Here I am playing with the camera, throwing a little slow motion up in there. Come on, man. We pay all this money for these cameras. You might as well use these gadgets to the fullness. So I got a few clips where I threw a little slow motion in there. So, I mean, I think it looks pretty neat, you know, washing everything off and stuff in the water, splashing in slow motion. Um, we always shoot these films and stuff and, you know, regular speed and stuff. So I'm trying to use the different details in the camera. All right. So I got my potatoes washed off and I'm getting ready to wrap them up in aluminum foil. All right. I just took that out the drawer. Got a couple sheets here that I'm going to put them on and I'm just going to wrap them up and I'll get everything done and then make sure I put them in the oven for a significant amount of time to make sure they're cooked all the way through. I always try to make sure that I cook them around about, around the same time so they will finish about the same time that the meat finishes. I don't like for my potatoes to be cooked and then, uh, you know, to cool down. I like for them to still be uh, pretty hot so you can actually, you know, use butter or cheese or whatever condiment you want to use to you know to actually make sure those potatoes and stuff are you know to your liking so that's what i like to do so i, I i'm wrapping them up right now and getting them ready for the oven and then i'm gonna put them up in and then we will be good to go so set my oven at 400 degrees and then i'm going to set it for about an hour and 20 minutes that's enough time to make sure they're cooked all the way through and that also that also is enough time to make sure that um, I'm good to go on the grill. All right, here it is. I had some fresh corn that I went and picked up from the store. And that corn, I'm going to shuck pretty good, make sure everything's good. Try to get all the uh, the husk and everything out the way and all the corn hair or whatever you like to call it. You know, just get it all out the way. Try to clean the corn um, as much as possible. Sometimes you don't get everything off, but you know, it's OK to have a little bit on it. I just don't like to have a lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of it, excuse me, on the corn. And here I am with the actual um, paper towel trying to clean off as much as possible and with my hands. But um, also going back to season and stuff, you'll see with the corn after I got everything washed off, um, I do the same thing. You know, I wash everything off. Here I am with the sink. I'm washing everything off, making sure it's good. I transfer it back. It's clean. And I have it on aluminum foil and I'm actually putting butter on it. I like to butter the corn and stuff pretty good. And and then I'll wipe it, uh, actually massage the corn with my hands to make sure the butter and stuff and fuses the actual, you know, corn on the cob while it's on the grill because I'm going to grill this corn. So that's what I'm doing right now is just making sure everything's good to go and making sure it's it's uh, it's really seasoned and, and infused, you know, with butter and stuff before I actually take it and put it on the grill. I don't know about you, man, but I do not like any like plain food. So there I am with some garlic. So I'm doing garlic and butter corn. And uh, I'm, that's the actual fresh corn on the cob that I'm actually put, put on the grill. All right. So there we have it. Everything's being prepared. Preparation is key. And once everything's done, get ready to take it to the grill. And there you go. All right. Here I'm playing with the fire. It took a little bit for it to get started. And here I am slow motion again once it got started. But um, I got everything going. And once it got started and stuff, you know, just let everything go and make sure it's it. Um, the coals and stuff burn, you know, to the point where they can ash over. And here it is. Once I, I put the grills and stuff on top and once they've ashed over, I spread them apart uh, before I actually put the grill on. And here I am with the meat. I like to set my meat on the outside um, because the heat's so hot on the inside. But if you set it far enough on the outside, it'll cook, start to cook thoroughly all the way through. Here I am. Um, I flipped it over and you can see uh, the meat starting to get a crust on it on one side or whatever. Not cooking too fast, but slow, making sure I'm putting it on the edge of the grill. And you can see that the fire also died down a little bit. 
which is good, but it still maintain a significant amount of heat. And you can see here I am shutting the grill back down, making sure everything is good. After a few minutes, about seven minutes, I let it sit on one side. Here I am back at it again, flipping the meat. That's what I believe in, constantly flipping the meat so it's, it cooks equally on both sides and all the way through that you will have a good cooked rib when you're finished. The flavor and stuff is there. Everything is good. The seasoning and stuff are popping. You know, uh, they're, 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 they're doing what they're supposed to do. And as you can see, I already put the corn on there. And here I am throwing those sausages on there. <laughs> All right. That casing on that sausage was pretty good. That's not Koneka right there, what the brand that we usually use. But that's a, um, a brand, a, a, a kind of sort of off brand that was that looked really, really close to it. I think it was Kelly's. But they cooked really well. And um, they were actually flavor for also. And there it is. Look at that. Look at that. That coating on that sausage right there, man. That's uh, that's outstanding. And here I am after I take uh, took the ribs and you know bathed them in some some um, some barbecue sauce. <laughs> I'm letting them you know sit up on the fire a little bit. And here I am with the slow motion again, letting the fire kiss those ribs as I has have them you know already bathed in that beautiful beautiful barbecue sauce. But I mean, I mean, I just like doing what I do, man. I, I like the way my food, you know, tastes when it's seasoned right. And I like the way it look. I mean, it ain't gonna look like that too much. Um, so I'm, I'm shooting a video now because when that fork and knife hit it, it's done deal, son. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, you try to make sure everything is good to go. And that is grilled to perfection the way you want it to be. So when you get ready to eat your food, you can enjoy it. So I have my corn and stuff up there. It's getting infused with the smoke and everything. And here's my wife afterwards. She's standing on the side with the camera and uh, she's watching me get up, get everything up and rack everything. Look at the juiciness dripping off of those ribs. I don't know if you've seen that, but those uh, those ribs are are really, really juicy and they cooked all the way through. And here it is. Look at that sausage just fell apart, man. That thing is so tender, but the casing on there has that pop to it. And I tell you, it's really, really good. But there I am, enjoying myself on the grill and just having a blast. All right, so I'm about to shut it down. After I get this corn off, then we're about to change directions and head into the house. And so everybody's pretty much, I think at that point, was pretty much ready to eat. So here is a plate that I fixed afterwards. This is this is mine. Everybody else is eating at this point, but I decided to plate this up like this for the camera. All right, that's a rack of ribs right there that I have, and that corn is cooked to perfection, and that potato is just awesome. I already buttered it up, salt and peppered it, and got everything the way it's supposed to be. I have my napkin and my fork ready, man, my knife. I'm about ready to dive in. I'm just doing this for the video to make sure you guys can see it, to make sure that uh, you can see how it look after the fact. I love it when the ribs, um, when they draw up on the bone, man. You know, I love that, you know, the aesthetics of it, but I also love the way, you know, you can actually grip that bone and, and actually take that meat off of there. If that's the way you eat your ribs, I don't eat my ribs and stuff with a fork. I eat my ribs in my hand. All right, but that potato right there, it is popping and it was outstanding. Like I said, it was perfectly perfectly infused with the butter and the flavor of the pe um, the pepper and stuff made it pop. Um, I had a little uh, Himalayan, pink Himalayan salt on there. And I'm telling you, man, I did. I, I put a little bit on the corn and I uh, put some pepper on the corn and stuff and it was seasoned. And here I am, you know, afterwards, I said, well, I'll do this for the camera because I wanted to see people, you know, actually see me eating the food. So. Here I am cheesing because I know that potato is on point. Giving it a thumbs up because it's legit. All right, I got my knife out and I'm about to hit this rib up. All right, and I'm cutting them. I love to cut my ribs up because um, I like to have them in singles. So here I am cutting my rib up. Look at that, cooked to perfection. Man, smoked all the way around, cooked well, man. And um, I was gonna take like two bites, but it was getting good to me. So I was like, you know what, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> so I went ahead and took a third bite and, uh, you know, gave it a thumbs up also, I, you know, for the camera. And here it is, beautiful piece of corn. And man, I'll tell you what, I was trying to kind of like be reserved on the camera, but uh, it got good. So, you know, giving it a thumbs up also, all three of them are A-OK. -okay. And here's <laughs> just to let you guys know that I'm not just, 
just playing around with it. This is a portion of my plate still left as I was eating. I was like, let me go ahead and put the camera on it before I go ahead and demolish the whole thing. So they didn't actually see that I'm eating my food. I'm not one of the people that do things for the camera. I ate my food. And afterwards, me and my family took a, uh, a drive to get some sweets. And that's where we ended at. It's nice right now. Just got through raining. It is pretty much the end of the night for, for us. We, um, we ate dinner. You guys see me cooking. Did a little something on the grill. But uh, we just went and picked up some, some blizzards from Dairy Queen. We were going to, we, we actually went to Sonic's. But they were, uh, their machine was broke. So we went to Dairy Queen and picked up a couple of mid, um, mini blizzards. I picked up a small, and uh, my family, they, they got minis. So just spending a little time with the family this weekend. Um, they had just come back in from her mother's, from the last weekend trip, uh, from celebrating her mother's birthday. Like I said, I had to work during that time. But my family's back now, and uh I asked them did they wanted to be in the videos and stuff this weekend. They really didn't want to be in the videos. <laughs> my wife was like, nah, I'm good. And my kids and stuff, you know, uh, I, my son was on here. He did some drawing and stuff. But my wife, she was pretty much like, she's not really like into the whole YouTube thing like like I am. So uh, I don't put my family on here unless they want to be on here. And uh, that's something I do as far as like respecting them and their personal space. But yeah, that's it, man. That's the, that's the vlog. It is the end of the night. Um, I got a little friend up here. Hold on. Let me see if you guys can see him. Let me see. Can I switch this thing around? I don't know if I can switch it around. Let me see. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a little gecko there. And he's hanging out, man. He's hanging out at the top of the house. He's way up there, too. I'm just assuming Hopefully that you can see him but he is way up there. So I'll leave him alone. That's who he's up there doing his thing with the bugs and stuff. So I let him be. So he's hanging out here and I'm hanging out here. All right, bringing it back down. Like I said, that's pretty much it for me on tonight. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me once again. I did an LS this weekend. Hopefully if you uh, were there, you enjoyed it. It was a lot of people coming in and out, man. So. Uh, Thank you guys for being so supportive. Love you guys, man. I hope y'all had a great weekend. But with that being said, God bless. You guys have a good night. And uh, y'all should be seeing this on Tuesday. All right, man. Y'all have a good night. Peace.